No matter which pitcher you decide to go with tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball, it is going to require some sort of leap of faith. Now, it could be because of injuries. It could be because of lack of sample size. could be because a dominant guy has slipped open the year. Whatever it may be, you're going to be taking a leap of faith. And you have to decide, can I buy into what I've seen so far? Are the concerns, the red flags, or require this leap of faith enough to push me away from this person and decide... Can I still use them? We're going to try to read through that today, try to decipher what there is to decipher and get you ready to make the best decision possible for tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. You're going to break down Wednesday's eight-game main slate with lock set for 6.35 p.m. Eastern for today. Again, lock is at 6.35 p.m. Eastern on FanDuel. So make sure you get those lineups finalized before then to get them in before lock. Only one weather note for today. That is once again in Chicago, where you have good pitching weather again for the Cubs and the Padres. 44 degree temperatures. Winds are in from right at seven miles per hour. So I downgrade batters there. And I would also upgrade pitchers as a result. That game 10 degrees colder than any other game on tonight's slate. We'll dig into the dicey pitching situation for tonight and much more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We do have our PGA podcast for the Mexico Open now up. Find that on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Uh, check it out to get some read on an interesting field. Pretty top heavy. We'll break it down. Uh, roster construction and much more all right over there. Search for that. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating as well. And of course, the solo shot also over on the FanDuel YouTube page. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can get on the action right from first tip with FanDuel. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. That's right. Just place a three-plus leg same-game parlay or same-game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game, and you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Massachusetts Hope is here. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, one 8 hope and or text hope and why In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Bryce Elder comes in with the highest seller on FanDuel. He checks in at $10,900. Kodai Senga, or Kodai Senga is $10,400. Anthony DiSclefani is at ten two. We got Logan Gilbert at $10,000. Sandy Alcantara at ninety eight. Mackenzie Gore comes in at ninety seven. Followed by Hunter Brown at ninety five. Patrick Sandoval against the A's at ninety two. And Tony Gonsolin off the IL. $9,000. Drew Smiley is the one guy above $8,000. He is $8,800. Now, you can hear based on the ordering of that, that things are kind of weird. Bryce Elder, not a huge sample this year, but a very high salary. Kodai Senga has had some issues with walks. Anthony DiSclefani in a tough matchup. Gilbert pushed back from yesterday's start. Alcantara struggling so far this year as a biceps issue. Mackenzie Gore, a lot of walks. I could keep going through everybody on this list and outline the red flags they have. To me, the least concerning red flag and the guy with the biggest upside, should everything be okay, is Logan Gilbert. And as a result, that Logan Gilbert will be my top pitcher for today. Now, Gilbert was pushed back from Tuesday's start because he had some muscle spasms on Sunday. Given, though, 
it was reported immediately that Gilbert would start today. That tells me he's probably good to go. And the fact that he is listed as a scheduled starter also gives me confidence that he'll go. He's 25 years old. Mariners don't want to risk this. I think we can feel pretty good about him. He's facing the Phillies here, who are a good team, but they are a team we can target with opposing pitchers. They have a 100 WRC plus against righties, a 23% strikeout rate, and a 7% walk rate. So across the board, pretty average numbers for this current active roster since the start of last year. So they're average. Gilbert, much better than average. He's added a splitter this year to his repertoire, and he has had some rough starts, so it's not all perfect by any means, but the peripherals are very good. In those four starts, Gilbert has a 2.93 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 31%. He's had good walk rates and good hard hit rates as well. And he has six plus strikeouts in all four starts. So Gilbert in the starts he has made has been very good. I haven't projected, assuming he's healthy, for 7.7 strikeouts tonight, which is easily the top mark on this slate. So basically what you want to do is decide... Have the Mariners' actions given me confidence that Gilbert is healthy? And to me, I say yes, but I also understand if you want to say no. So to me, I am going with Gilbert, number one, and I feel okay about that. Uh, but I also understand if you're wary due to the injury, stuff like that. To me, he's the number one guy, but with everyone here, there will be concerns. Now, when I was prepping for this podcast yesterday, I thought, okay, Bryce Elder pitching pretty well so far this year, got a low salary, I assumed, and he's in a good matchup against the Marlins. So I thought that, that there was a possibility Elder might be my value player, at least in the $9,500 range. Instead, he comes in at $10,900. So it forces you to go back to the drawing board and decide, do I still like Elder enough to give him a... $10,900 salary. I would like to say no, because in sports betting and daily fantasy, we should always be price sensitive. It's very important what salaries are and stuff like that, uh, especially for like betting. You know, you want to be price sensitive. So I tried to go elsewhere from the second pick. I think that Sandy Alcantara is very interesting. We'll talk about him and things to watch, but I do think that Elder does still hold the second spot down despite the high salary. As much as it pains me to say that, I think that he is still the number two guy. Now, the reason I was interested in, in Elder to begin with is that, I mean, the matchup helps. Based on the Marlins, they have a 98 WRC plus against righties, 134 ISO, 33% fly ball rate, which means they have a tough time doing damage against opposing pitchers. That's a good thing for Elder because he has had that one flaw this year of letting up too much hard contact. He's throwing more sliders early in 2023, and his strikeout rate has gone up as a result, which is good, but his hard hit rate is 53%, which can lead to damage in certain spots. I'm just not sure this will be the spot to do that, given the Marlins' lack of power. Elders had really good results so far this year with a 1.14 ERA. That's not going to stick there, but it should still be pretty good. He has six-plus strikeouts in all but one game, and that can work on this slate. So... I would have loved to pivot off of Elder here upon seeing his salary being as high as it is. But honestly, given the matchup, given how well he has pitched, given the concerns with literally everybody else, I didn't have a lot of options. I think that Alcantara, if you get the read that Elder will be more popular than Alcantara, pivot. And we'll talk about Alcantara later on. But for right now, without knowing what projected roster rates are, then I think I will go Elder number two, as gross as that may sound. Now, when I listed off the starting pitchers for today, I listed off a lot of names. Uh, that's because most guys have very high salaries. Salaries are tough for today on FanDuel, which means all the relevant guys outside of maybe a couple has salaries above $9,000. The one guy who I feel okay about with a salary below that is Drew Smiley. So by default, Smiley is going to be our value play for today. And I am fine with that, even without putting too much weight on what we saw last week. Of course, in case you missed it, Smiley took a perfect game into the ninth inning, had a weird ball that went like three feet, uh, and he collided with the catcher trying to trying to field it. Um, you know, bummer for him. But it was not just that that one that one start. It does help because it was his second start against the Dodgers in a row. He had ten strikeouts there, went seven and two thirds innings, just one hit allowed. And he also had the Dodgers to one run his first meeting against them earlier on this year. So there's only been one hiccup for Smiley so far in four starts, which weirdly enough came against the Reds. Six earned runs there. 
But since then, he's allowed just two earned runs in three starts. And this is a turnaround we saw from Smiley beginning last year. He's always had issues with hard contact, letting up a lot of hard contact and fly balls, and it's gotten him in trouble. The fly balls are still there, but he started mixing in a sinker more 11 starts ago. And his hard hit rate since then is 34%, which is much better than it was previously. So still a lot of fly balls, but not as damaging as they were before. The strikeout rate for Smiley in that time is fine. It's it's 23%. Padres on the opposing side don't strike out very much. So I'd prefer to spend up. Again, Gilbert and Alcantara, not that far away from uh, from Smiley. But Smiley's pitching well. Tremendous weather for pitching tonight. And he's the one salary, one low salary guy I can feel okay about. So I'm fine with Smiley at 88, even if I don't ultimately wind up using him for tonight, because I think I'll prefer to get into the upper range and focus on Gilbert, Elder, and Alcantara as my primary core plays at pitcher. You would think that with pitching being kind of weird and a lot of question marks, stacking might be easier. The problem is a lot of the reasons that the pitchers are dicey is because they have high strikeout rates, which are good but a lot of walks, which are bad for stacking because it means sewer balls in play. So there aren't a lot of perfect stacks. The one that I think comes closest to being really nice and more of a template kind of stack is the Dodgers, and they will be my top option for today. They're facing Ronzi Contreras, who is a pitcher with promise, and he's had some really nice starts this year, but I think in this matchup, he may struggle. Contreras coming off an eight strikeout outing, which came against the Reds. He went six and two thirds innings, and let up just one earned run. That is one start after he also held the Cardinals in check for six innings. So overall, um, it's been a pretty decent start for Contreras, especially with those past two games being both very good, one of which in a tough matchup. But the peripherals for Contreras still have some issues in them. 4.92 skill interactive ERA. 20% strikeout rate and a 9.6% swinging strike rate. The batted ball profile is okay for Contreras, but really tough test here. The Dodgers, even with no Max Muncy, no Will Smith, still have a 122 WRC plus against righties on the current active roster since the start of last year. Their ISO is 192, 41% fly ball rate. So they're not at full strength, but it is a very tough spot. And I think we can feel good about the Dodgers here, even with Contreras seeming to have made some gains. So I think the Dodgers, the top traditional stack for tonight, as in they check the box we typically want to check when looking for pitchers in DFS. Contreras has super even platoon splits across his career, which means we can just kind of target guys who are hitting well against righties. And honestly, right now, I know the results may not show it, but I think that includes Jason Hayward. Hayward has 46 plate appearances so far. But in that time, his barrel rate is 16.1%. He has a 71% hard hit rate. That is not always translated to results as of yet, but he's had the power. Now, because of all the guys being out, Hayward is finding himself batting in the middle of this lineup. So his salary is 26. He's hitting the ball pretty hard, hitting the middle of the lineup. I'm kind of okay with that. You know, it might not stick, probably not going to stick with the way it has, but I'm okay with it. So Jason Hayward, I think is a really good play for DFS, which feels very weird to say in 2023, but at least for right now, I'm willing to buy in, especially with his salary being as low as it is. The second stack is also somewhat traditional, but it's based on a lot of factors more so than just a starter. That's the Angels for tonight. The Angels facing Luis Medina making his debut. He's just 23 years old, and he's looked pretty solid in AAA so far. But the Angels facing him are in a good spot once we consider the full scope of things. And part of it is Medina, but part of it is the rest of the team. We'll talk about that part in a second. But with Medina, he was really struggling with walks in the minors. He had a 20% walk rate this year. It was 15% in AA last year, which means he'll let up a lot of base runners. And with stolen bases being up this year, base runners are more valuable now than they used to be if the team is willing to run. Like the twins don't run, but like the angels are willing to do so. Plus Medina's swinging strike rate in AAA was 10.1%, which is nothing too scary. So part of it is Medina, you know, just being fine. The rest of the stack is how much the rest of the A's roster boosts this stack. The A's have the worst active roster bullpen skill interactive ERA in the league since the start of last year. And it's not just the worst. It is the worst by half a run above every, almost half a run above everyone else. And their defense is below average too. 
So Medina may not go long. He may put guys on base when he's out there and the defense won't help him. And the guys coming out of the pen behind him are struggling. I think that all adds up to make the angels a really good stack for today. You have to go beyond just starting pitcher, but I think that we should always do that a, but B, especially for a team that is out as outliersly bad as the A's. I think it makes a lot of sense. The A's, the angels to me, a good stack here. It does seem like Brandon Drury may be turning a corner. He had a two homer night a couple nights ago. Last night struck a ball really well. A hard hit ball uh, was kind of a line drive. Uh, the double dong is against the lefty. So it's not perfect, but he drew a walk in that uh, two homer game. He hasn't done a lot of that this year, which maybe says he's seen the ball better than he was. His hard hit rate is 47% the past week. I'm not sure if it's a true turnaround but his salary is still low. And we saw Drury do really well over a large sample last year. So I'm willing to check it out. Uh, again, the salary is $2,600. That's not too bad. So I'm more willing to buy in without seeing like full, full signals. This guy is turning things around when the salary is low. And that is the case with Drury. So Brandon Drury, a quality play for tonight. Our third stack is going to be the Giants. They're facing Steven Matz. And I wouldn't stack here on a typical slate, but... There aren't a ton of great stacks available for tonight, and I think that makes the Giants viable basically by default. And I do think Matt's is decent enough. He struggled last year, but really good year back in 2021. And some of the building blocks he had to have that good year in 2021 are still in place. He's still getting whiffs. He's converting those into strikeouts, but he's letting up too much hard contact. Through four starts, Matt's has let up a 46% hard hit rate, which leads to a 6.55 ERA, his expected ERA is 5.01, and he struggled with this last year too. Before suffering injuries and shifting to the bullpen, Matt's let up a 38% hard hit rate. So his issues with hard contact are a long running thing. The Giants put the ball in the air a lot against lefties. They have a 41% fly ball rate, so they will strike out. And this is a risky stack as a result of that because Matt's is not a bad pitcher, but I like the upside enough to give them a swing here and feel okay in doing so. And the Giants getting healthier. Mitch Hanniger is now back with this team as well. That's a positive thing as well. But it's the first time this year I've gotten to talk J.D. Davis, just Dongs Davis. He is back. He has been bonkers so far. Huge home run late in that game on Monday. 246 ISO overall so far. 16.2% barrel rate. He struck out too much last year. Um and the the sixteen point two percent barrel rate last year was uh was last year, but he just struck out too much and it kind of masked how hard he was hitting the ball. But the strikeout rate this year is down to twenty five percent. So I think we're going to see Davis crush lefties. I like him even if he slides down the order a bit now that they're healthier. But with it being a lefty, I'd expect Davis bat and clean up maybe third with Hanniger up there as well. So always dig in to make sure guys are going to stay in the game for the Giants. But with Davis given he's batting cleanup against righty sometimes. I think you feel good about him remaining in the game throughout. So J.D. Davis, really fun play for today. For the Giants, Mitch Hanniger in that discussion as well. Things to watch for tonight. Talked about Sandy Alcantara before. Let's talk about the dynamics with him right now and why he's not in the top three, but also still very much worth considering in DFS. He's dealing with a biceps issue, but sounds like he should be good to go. Last time out, Alcantara had nine strikeouts in six innings. So he was kind of back to his old self there. He's less consistent now, but he still has upside. He's facing the Braves. Pretty rough matchup. I'm still intrigued by rolling Alcantara out there. So if you get the sense that Elder will be, will be popular, I would say pivot to Alcantara. Feel good about that. Uh, if if Elder will not be popular, then it's fine. But I want to get that read. And if I get the green light to go Alcantara instead, I will happily take it. The Mets are at least worth a look for stacking. They're facing Mackenzie Gore, who's looked really good so far this year, but still walking a lot of guys. That can lead to big innings. It can lead to a lot of access to middle relievers, and we want both those things. So the Mets are not a priority stack, but they are definitely one I want to consider for tonight. Finally, I don't mind considering some A's, uh, right-handed batters against Patrick Sandoval. Sandoval is doing a good job of suppressing hard contact this year, but a lot of walks, not many strikeouts. His expected ERA is 4.95. The A's likely, I think, to be better against lefties and righties this year. So they're worth consideration if you need one guy to fill out a lineup, like Brent Rooker, you want to ride that that hot streak there. I think that's totally fine. Uh, they're just kind of like a, a 
roster filler more so than one off or stack considerations, at least for me. Let's finish things up here with the dinger calls for today. The boring one, talk about Mitch Hanniger being back off the IL for the Giants. Typically, I go based on salary to decide whether they're boring or fun. Hanniger's salary is 28, so it's still pretty low, but I think he's kind of too good to be in the fun category. So we'll go Mitch Hanniger, a couple homers in his rehab stint, and we'll make him the boring home run call for today. The fun one. I'm going to ride with Jason Hayward. Again, I think I, bl- I buy into the small samples on numbers that stabilize quickly. Hayward hitting the ball really hard right now, batting pretty high in the or- order, facing a guy who will let up fly balls in hard contact. So let's go Jason Hayward. Uh, home run calls for today, Mitch Hanniger and Jason Hayward. That's all we got here for the solo shot for today. But we'll be back with you once again tomorrow, breaking down Thursday slate. Don't forget to check out the PGA DFS podcast with myself and Brandon Gandula. If you want to play some PGA DFS on FanDuel for the Mexico Open. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.